This case takes place in the United States of America on the 2nd of June, 2020. Shane Goldsby was a 26-year-old man who was incarcerated for a list of crimes. Shane had a rather troubled upbringing. It's reported that he suffered at the hands of his mother when he was growing up. She would lay her hands on him and would sometimes even chain him up outside and leave him out there. The torment that Shane was experiencing was brought to light and he was put through the foster care system. He went through 10 different foster homes, causing him a great deal of instability in his life. Eventually, as Shane got older, his mother was able to speak with him again and before too long, his mother began introducing him to illegal substances and the two would often take them together. Also, Shane's little sister, who was a minor, was a victim of a horrific essay at the hands of an elderly man. In 2017, when Shane was aged 22, he was wanted by the police for a stabbing assault. The police spotted him and tried taking him into custody. However, Shane ran from the scene into a wooded area. The police got out of their vehicles and chased him on foot. But Shane circled round and got into the police car. He then drove away. Upon realizing their car had been stolen, the officers called for backup. Several cars were now in pursuit of Shane. The chase resulted in an officer being injured and Shane was able to get away. He was, however, later arrested, charged and sentenced to five years in prison. During his time in prison, Shane had a few altercations with the prison guards and was moved to a number of different prisons. But in 2019, Shane said that he found God and became a more peaceful inmate. From this point on, it's reported that Shane was doing much better. But randomly, on the 2nd of June 2020, Shane was moved to a different prison, this time Airway Heights. Shane was brought in, processed and put into his cell. Inside this cell was another inmate with whom he would now be living with. This inmate was 70-year-old Robert Munger. Robert had been found guilty of some truly horrific and disgusting crimes. Robert was serving a 43-year sentence for possession of CP and three counts of child SA. Robert was on a watch list as he had spoken about wanting to end his life numerous times and was refusing to eat food. The lack of food resulted in him becoming frail. Shortly after Shane entering the cell, Robert told him what his crimes were. He spoke in detail about what he had done to his victims. Shane then realized who he was sharing a cell with. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that Shane's little sister was a victim of SA and the perpetrator was an elderly man. Well, it just so happened that Shane was sharing a cell with a man who had done unspeakable things to his little sister. When speaking about when he realized who was in his cell, Shane would later say, I was in shock. This stuff doesn't happen. You're talking the same institution, the same unit, the same pod in the same cell as this dude. That's like hitting the jackpot in the casino seven times. But remarkably, Shane didn't attack Robert. Instead, he left the cell and spoke with a guard. Shane said that he needed to move cells immediately and gave his reasons as to why. This was dismissed by the guard, who told him to go back to his cell. Shane would later recall, I went back to my cell. We've got something in there called the button. You can press it if anything is going on. So, I hit that button too, but nobody came on the mic. So in my head, I'm completely feeling like this was what they wanted to happen. Shane waited for someone to reply to the button, but they didn't. Robert then went into more detail telling Shane that he had taken photographs and videos of himself doing horrendous things to minors, including his sister, and spoke about what he had done to her. It's at this point that Shane snapped. Shortly after hearing these things, Shane punched Robert in the face, dropping him to the floor. Now on the floor, Shane continued to strike him in the face around 14 times and then proceeded to stomp on his head. 
Shane kicked Robert a further two more times before walking away, leaving Robert badly beaten on the floor. Shane was quickly apprehended and taken into custody, and Robert was rushed to hospital and given medical aid. The entire incident was captured on the CCTV inside the prison, which as you can imagine was described as rather brutal. The amount of rage Shane would have been feeling in that moment must have been very hard to control. Robert was already somewhat frail and ill due to rejecting food and because of his age. A few days after being attacked by Shane, Robert died from his injuries, and now Shane was charged with premeditated murder. The trial would begin in August of 2021. Shane's defense claimed that he never intended to actually kill Robert. He stated that he only intended to cause harm. He also stated that he tried his best not to harm Robert and tried twice to alert the guards who he was sharing a cell with and why it should be changed. Shane also claimed that the pairing was too coincidental and believed that the correctional officers had set him up. However, the prosecution put forward that the extra stomps to Robert's face were done with the intent to kill. Shane pleaded guilty to second degree murder and was found guilty. It was possible that he could be given a life sentence. It's reported that Shane showed a great amount of remorse for what he had done. Before his sentencing, Shane's attorney read out a statement prepared by Shane. He had tried to read it, but he became too emotional. The statement read, I cannot imagine what it must be like to lose a loved one in this kind of way. To Robert's wife and his whole family, I apologize. I am so sorry, and I hope you are able to heal from what I have caused. To my little sis, I say I love you. I apologize for what I did. I hope I don't get life, and I hope to God I see you again. I hope to God that if I don't see you again, then you know why I did what I did, that I love you, and I always will, and that I apologize that I made that choice. Just keep that head up. I love you, I always will. Get a hold of me some day. Shane was sentenced to an additional 24 years on his original sentence. The prosecutors stated that the additional 24 years he received was intended so that there was no possibility of Robert's wife being alive upon Shane's release. When speaking about the murder later, Shane said, I gave my life to God in 2019. I quit gangbanging. I was doing good. Then they put me in the same cell as this dude. I feel set up. They put me in a position that I should never have been in. This should not have happened at all. This dude who did some sick, twisted things to my little sister, my family, my blood, my life, and they wanted to put me in there with him face to face. So, I guess you're wondering just how and why was Shane placed in a cell with Robert? Well, a few months after the murder had taken place, an investigation was conducted. This investigation found that there was little the prison staff could have done to prevent the incident from taking place. Despite the fact that Shane had tried to tell them who Robert was and what he had done to his sister on two occasions, they also highlighted the fact that Shane and his sister had different last names and they didn't realize that Shane's sister was a victim of Robert. It said that none of the staff had any idea of the connection between the two until after the murder had taken place. Many have found the case of Shane to be rather unfair, claiming that the prison bears some responsibility for the murder for putting him in this position. Reasoning that most people, especially a big brother, would have done something similar. After all, what would you do if your sister's attacker was gloating about the horrific things he had done to her? Shane will serve more than 25 years in prison for the murder of Robert and his previous crimes. He will also be subject to three years parole following his release. When this time comes, he will be over the age of 50. Shane is also required to pay restitution to Robert's family.